Here in New Jersey, corn is abundant during the summer months. You can find it at all the grocery stores, the local farmer's market. It's in season, it's sweet, it's delicious, and mm. it could not be any mm. easier to make. Mm. So today I'm gonna show you how to cook corn on the cob three different ways. I will show you how to boil your corn on the cob, how to cook corn on the cob in the microwave, which is a total game changer when you're really in a pinch or if you just wanna make one or two pieces of corn. And then finally, my personal favorite, I'll show you how to grill your corn on the cob. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm also gonna share my favorite way to season corn on the cob without using any oil or butter. Mm. So I'm gonna start with the classic, how to boil your corn on the cob. So I have a nice big pot here. I recommend using at least a five quart pot. And I'm gonna fill that with some cold water and then add a tablespoon of kosher salt. Get that over a high heat and let everything come up to a nice big rolling boil. Now there is a bit of a debate on whether or not you should add salt to the water when you're making corn on the cob. Some people feel that the salt makes the corn a little bit tough and not quite as tender. Personally, I don't find that to be true, and I really love how the salted water infuses some flavor into the corn. But with that being said, whether you salt the water or you don't salt the water, this technique is gonna work either way. So I encourage you to perhaps try both methods and see which one you prefer. As for the corn itself, when you boil your corn, you wanna make sure that you remove the husk and the silk. So these are the silks, this is the husk. You just wanna take everything off and get that in the garbage. If I know ahead of time that I'm gonna be boiling my corn, I try to do this at the grocery store. It just saves a little extra fuss and a little extra mess once you get home. Once the pot is at a full rolling boil, I'm just going to drop the corn one by one into the pot. Then I'm gonna pop on a lid and let it come back up to that boil because when you add the corn, the temperature of the water drops a bit. So we wanna come back up to that boil. Then I'll remove the lid and set my timer for six minutes. This is a great place to start. If you had a whole bunch of corn in there and your pot was really full, you might wanna go for eight minutes, but you can kind of test it as you go along. Ideally, what we're looking for is for the corn to turn this beautiful, bright, vibrant yellow and for the kernels to be nice and tender. Then to be safe, I like to just pull them out one by one using a kitchen tong, let a little bit of that extra water drip off and then transfer it right onto my serving plate. This is hands down one of the easiest ways to make corn and if you're doing a lot of grilling and there's no room on the grill, this technique can be very useful. Mm. 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 The next technique I'm sharing is how to cook your corn on the cob in the microwave. I recently discovered this little kitchen hack and I have to tell you, it is so useful when you just wanna make a couple pieces of corn or if you're just cooking for the kids and you're not making a big family meal or if you're just cooking for one or two people. Here's what you do. You're going to leave the corn fully intact, just as it is with the husk and the silks, the whole nine. And you're gonna pop this into the microwave. For every one piece of corn you make, you're gonna to wanna to cook it for four minutes. For every additional piece, you're gonna add two minutes, right? So if it was one piece of corn, it would be four minutes. If it was two pieces of corn, it would be six minutes. If it was three pieces of corn, it would be eight minutes, and so on and so forth. I have a small microwave, so I never do more than two pieces at a time. So in it goes and I will set my timer for six minutes. Now, just as a quick side note, all microwaves vary a bit. Some you can adjust the temperatures on, mine you cannot. So use this kind of as your baseline and then you can tweak as needed. Once the corn is done, it's going to be very hot. So I like to use a kitchen towel to remove it from the microwave, get it onto my cutting board. And then once I feel like I can handle it, what you're gonna do is you wanna cut off the stem end of the corn. So not the top where you would peel it from, but the end where it grows from, right? So the bottom of the corn. I'm gonna cut a good hearty inch or two off the bottom and then watch this. You're gonna squeeze the top of the corn, kind of like you would like a, a, a tube of toothpaste. And you're gonna see that the corn just slides right out of the husk. No silks involved, it's super neat, and you've got this perfectly piece of steamed corn. So easy, so delicious, and my new favorite way to cook corn when I only need one or two pieces. Mm, 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 mm. And for the final cooking technique, I'll show you how to cook corn on the cob on the grill, which is my personal favorite. So the first thing you wanna do is get your grill on. You want it at like a medium low. Again, every grill varies a bit, so you'll wanna play with this, but the temperature I had was about 450. Then the way I like to prep the corn is I start by pulling off any of the silks that are sticking up out of the top of the corn. The silks can catch fire and burn on the grill, so I just pull off any visible pieces. 
And then I like to remove some of the outer husks on the corn. I'm gonna leave some intact, but I like to take some away. Here's why I like to do that. If you leave all of the corn husks on, then once you get them on the grill, they're still gonna cook and they're gonna be steamed all the way through and they'll be absolutely delicious. But I find if you leave a few of those on, like a nice thin layer, that it infuses a little bit more of that smoky grill flavor and you'll even get a few little char marks on just some of the corn kernels without overcooking the corn. So I find this to be the perfect balance. So go ahead and just get them prepped just like I have here and then I'm gonna take them out to the grill. Now I like to lay them on the grill horizontally so that the grates are actually running vertically against the corn. This way you get those fun grill marks. Just place them on the grill, shut the cover. I set my timer for five minutes. After the five minutes, come back out. You can see that they've got a nice light char mark on them. You can see those grill marks right there. So I'm gonna rotate them, put the lid back down, go for another five minutes. You're gonna do this anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes, rotating the corn every five minutes. And you're gonna know the corn is done because you can see the corn that's popping through. It's gonna be a nice bright yellow and the outer leaves are gonna to be totally charred. So you're gonna get this off the grill, let it cool till it's cool enough to comfortably handle, then pull back the husks and any silks that remain and you will have this perfectly beautifully cooked corn on the cob that you did right on the grill. And what you're gonna see is that the corn kernels are still nice and plump, they're not overcooked, and some of them get that beautiful char mark on them without having too much. In my opinion, this is the most delicious way to cook corn. And as I promised you, I'm gonna show you my very favorite way to season corn on the cob without using any oil or butter. Not that I have anything against oil or butter, my friends. There is nothing wrong with a good old fashioned piece of corn on the cob, rubbed down with a little bit of butter, sprinkled with a little bit of uh, sea salt over the top, and to be enjoyed. But let me just show you this other technique. So what I do is I take a little bit of chili powder, then I take a little bit of my kosher salt, which is a little bit grainier than your average salt, which is a good thing, especially for corn on the cob. And just using my fingers, I work it in, right? So we have a combination of the chili powder, which is a mixture of cumin and oregano and garlic, and then the salt to give it a little pop. Then I've got some lime wedges, and what you're gonna do is take your wedge of lime, dip it into the chili powder and salt mixture, and then you're gonna see that the spices stick to the lime. Rub that all over your corn, giving the lime a little bit of a squish. This gets all of those spices in between all the nooks and crannies of the corn, and it gives it a nice bright pop of flavor from the lime as well. And then when it runs out, you just give it another dip mm. and back mm -hmm. on. Mm. I am obsessed with making corn this way, especially in the summer. I have to thank my dear friends, Naraj and Salome, for sharing this technique with me. It is a must try. So simple and so delicious. But of course, like always, I'm so curious to know, what's your favorite way to make corn? Comment down to the comments below and do let me know. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody else you know who wants to make healthy eating easy and insanely delicious. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I will see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is so bomb.com. Mmm. Scream summer. Screams.